usage of electrolysis, extractions of metal. So that means you take out the metal from the mineral. Example, one of the famous mineral is bauxite. So bauxite is the mineral that you get from the earth. And inside these minerals, we have aluminum. So you can just do electrolysis on this bauxite, and then you will get aluminum from bauxite. So that is extractions of metals. Okay. The second usage is electroplating. So electroplating is we add a layer of metal on an object. So for example, let's say you have a iron spoon. So it doesn't look nice. So you can add a gold layer. So that is electroplating. So it's adding a metal layer on an object. Okay, now C, purifications of metal. Okay, purifications of metal, this is uh, kind of direct. So the metal is impure. You put it in the electrolysis, the electrolytic cell, then you will eventually get a pure metal. Of course, in details how we do it, we will take a look. So let's look at the subtopic here. So first of all, we have electro plating. So electroplating is adding a metal layer on an object. Okay, so coating one metallic object with another metal using electrolysis. So from here you can see, uh, you want to coat a metal object with another metal, you have to use electrolysis. And we have to put the object at the cathode, at the cathode. Okay, so you have to put the object at the cathode. Okay, uh, let's say, for example, spoon, uh, spoon, uh, I mean, sorry, key. You want to coat this key with a metal, okay? So let's say copper. You want to coat the key with a copper metal. So what to do is you have to put the key at the cathode and then you put the copper at the anode. Okay, so anode. Uh. So the anode is make of copper. It's made of copper. And then this is the uh, the object to be plated. If you can see that uh, object to be plated, this is the key. Okay, now let's see the details here. Yeah? Anode. So anode is this one. We put copper. Anode made of metal you want to electroplate object with. So you want to, our object is the key. You want to electroplate with copper then you put copper at anode. Okay, so what happened at anode is, at anode, oxidation happened. So oxidation happens at cathode. So the equations for oxidation is copper become copper two plus, plus two electrons. So this is an oxidation half equation. So something like this happens. From this equation, we understand that the copper solid, the copper electron, dissolve in water, and dissolve in water, dissolve in the aqueous solutions, and after that, it moves to the cathode, and then the copper 2 plus become copper again and stick on the key. Okay, so that is what happened uh, at anode. Now, next point, let's see. Ions of same metals as 
and not in solution. Okay, so ions of same metals in solution. That means the solution, the electrolytes here. For example, you can use something with copper. So example, copper two sulfate. Copper two sulfate, copper is there. Copper two plus is there. Okay. So we have to make sure the ions is same element with the anode. So if the anode use copper, then the electrolyte must have copper as well. Okay. Next point, object to be plated at cathode. So the key where we want to put copper layer on it, so we put it at cathode. So what happened at cathode is reduction. Okay, cathode. What happened is reduction. Reduction, huh? And reduction means receiving electrons. So the Cu2 plus in the electrolyte will go to the cathode because cathode is negatively charged. And then they will take electrons from the cathode and then it becomes Cu. So the copper atom will stick on the key. So it forms a copper layers. Okay, so next point, used to make things look better. So it looks better, let's say this is a iron key. So now it become a brown color. Okay, so become a copper key. Prevent corrosions. So iron key used to corrode, used to rust. Then now you electroplate with copper, prevent it from rusting. So that is electroplating. Huh? So uh, one extra thing here, for anode, you know, the equation is like this, and the observation is going to be like this. Huh? Uh, the observation is anode becomes thinner. So it becomes thinner because the the anode, no, which is made of copper metal, and the copper metal dissolves in the electrolyte. So that's why it becomes thinner. Cathode, on the other hand, cathode becomes thicker. So cathode becomes thicker. So it becomes thicker basically because the copper 2 plus from the solutions receive electrons and then it's become copper metal and the copper metal stick on the key so that's why it becomes thicker okay so we have done this part now let's continue the next part the next page yeah? okay so let's see here uses aluminum copper plastic and ceramics so i want to see the the usage of three of these substance so for aluminum used for electricity cable okay, electricity cable uh, in front of the house or in in the town you know so at the at the pole there so they put aluminum as the electricity cable so why because it's light and it's non-corrosive and it's a good conductor and it's cheaper cheaper than copper Okay, so maybe uh, why we don't use copper as the electricity cable because it is expensive. So if you use copper as electricity cable, then we have people cut the cable and sell it. So we don't want that to happen. So we use aluminum. It's a cheaper metal. So cables have steel core for strength. Okay, so that means the cable is not just make of 100% aluminum, it has a steel core. That means it's in the middle of the cable, it's made of steel to make the cable stronger. Okay, now copper used in electrical wires as it is a very good conductor. Not the best, but it is uh, good enough. Okay, so for normal use. Uh, so electrical wires, 
compared to electricity cables. So try to imagine that electricity cables is outside of the house, those uh, set up by uh, the government, the TNB, okay? and electrical wires is normally used inside the house, the cable inside the house. Okay, so uh, duct town. So duct town means the copper metal, right, can pull into wires. Uh, so pull into wires. Uh, so that is the meaning of duct town. Uh, so you can use, let's say this is a piece of copper, you can use machine to pull it in two different directions and then it is slide i mean the two layers slide across each other and then they become two separated pieces of copper so that is uh, dark town where you can use this way to form the wires okay now the third one plastic and ceramics of course, these two are non-conductor, so they are used insulator. So used as insulators because they don't conduct electricity. Conduct heat poorly. So plastic used for casing in plugs. So you see the plugs is made of plastic. Ceramic used to support cable in electricity pylons. Okay, so. Uh, electricity pylons and ceramics. I let you take a take a quick look. Uh, so how they use ceramics in electricity pylons. Okay, so let's see. Yeah. Okay. Now you can see it here. Ceramics in electricity pylon. Okay, let's see the image. So this is the pylon and we want to see where's the ceramics. Huh? I'll choose a picture which is clear enough to see that. Check first. Okay, so something like this. You can see the pictures here. The, the ceramic is used here. And maybe this is better. Okay. Uh, so you can see it in these pictures. This is the ceramics. Yeah. Okay, so this is the one. Ceramic in the pylon. So they are made of ceramics. Huh? So here also. Now let's continue with the notes. Okay. Refining metals. This is purifying impure metals. So that means the impure metals, you can purify it through electrolysis. The rules to do so, first, cathode. Thin strips of pure metal. Okay, so you put pure metals at the uh, here cathode at the cathode. Huh? So always remember that cathode is the one that becomes thicker, becomes thicker. Huh? Okay, so the anode is the one that becomes thinner. So anode we put impure metals, and it becomes thinner. That means the impure metals. The impure copper will dissolve in the electrolyte. Then the impurity will sink to the bottom. Okay. Then the the impure copper, the copper will dissolve in the electrolyte, becomes Cu2 plus. Okay, I write it down. Huh? Anode is made of impure copper. And we know that anodes become 
thinner. Anode becomes thinner. So you should expect the Cu, the anode, dissolve in water to become Cu2 plus plus two electron. At the meantime, the impurity sink at the bottom of the electrolytes that will sink around here. Okay? And then leaving the Cu2 plus to continue its functions and come over here and get electron and stick to the cathode. So what come here is the pure Cu2 plus which become Cu. So that's why we are able to purify the, the, the copper, leaving the impurity here. So that is how it works. So the electrolyte, aqueous salt solutions of metal. So that means if we are using copper, then this one must have copper also. So we use copper to sulfate. Okay. Now let's see the information here. Copper atoms from the impure copper loses electrons and becomes copper ions. So as you can see, impure copper loses electrons, become copper ions. Copper ion gains electrons and deposits on the pure copper at copper atoms. So that is what happened at the cathode. So at the cathode, we have pure copper. And we know that cathode becomes taker. And what happened is the Cu2 plus in the electrolytes, you get electrons and then it becomes Cu and this copper will stick with the cathode. So stick to the cathode. So we should expect the pure copper here to be thicker and thicker. So that means we will get more and more pure, pure copper gathered up at this cathode. So that is how we purify it. So something like this. As you can see, the anode become thinner. The impurity sink. And then the copper deposit here. So it have a new layers of copper. So it become thicker. So the cathode become thicker. So reactions at anode. Copper minus two electrons become copper two plus. So if you feel like, oh, I, I'm not used to this way. Then you can use the way that I wrote just now. Instead of using minus two electrons here, you can put positive two electrons on the other side, which looks normal a bit. Okay, so but this is still correct. Now you can shift the minus two electrons to the right, then it becomes plus two electrons. Mass decreases. Like what I mentioned, the anode becomes thinner. Reactions at cathode, Cu2 plus plus two electrons become copper. So it form a new layers. Mass increases. Okay, now let's move on. Okay, so this is another usage. Uh, extracting metal uh, from the minerals, for example. Uh, so extractions of aluminium. The main ore of aluminium is bauxite. So the ore here means the minerals. Or maybe you can say the, the stones that you get from the earth, from the underground, then you can take out the aluminum from this ore. So the main ore of aluminum is bauxite. Bauxite has high melting point. So imagine this is something like a piece of stone, something around that. So you want to melt it, but it has high melting point. So maybe you need a few thousands degrees Celsius to melt it. So that is a waste of electricity or a waste of fuel. Okay. Now, because of that, we do something uh, like this. Huh? You see what they wrote here. Aluminium 3 oxide, alumina, is dissolved in 
molten cryolite. Molten cryolite is Na3AlF6. So this is cryolite. So this mixture has a lower melting point, a few hundreds. Okay. From a few thousand become a few hundreds. So it's safe electricity and hence is industrially preferred. Uh, so what are they trying to say is bauxite has high melting point. So you put bauxite with cryolite. When bauxite mixed with cryolite, it has a lower melting point and we can save electricity. We don't need to heat it up until a very high temperature which use up the electricity. Yeah? Uh, so uh, we just need a lower temperature to make it melt. Okay, so now it is melt. Imagine that. So we have molten, uh, we have the molten cryolite plus aluminum ore. So it's in molten form now. And this is the pictures that shows electrolysis in industry. So at the anode, we use carbon. At the cathode, we use carbon also. But cathode is at the side here. Okay, so uh, what happened is the molten aluminum ore contains aluminum 3 plus. So the molten aluminum ore. Molten aluminum ore means bauxite. Right? So the bauxite, after adding with cryolites, you can heat until it melts. When it is melted, it has aluminum 3 plus. Okay, so basically aluminum 3 plus you go to the cathode. You go to the cathode huh? because cathode is negatively charged. So you go to the cathode. So cathode is the one that uh, makes reduction happens by supplying electrons to aluminum. Okay, so uh, reduction. Reduction happens. So that means aluminum 3 plus gains electrons. The equation is aluminum 3 plus plus 3 electrons become aluminum. And the aluminum sink at the bottom here as this orange layer. And we call that molten aluminum. Okay, so we get the, the aluminum uh, without, without uh, others. So we just want the aluminum. We don't want others. So we managed to make it. And let's see the next point. During electrolysis, aluminum is produced at the carbon cathode. The cathode get aluminum. This is where we get the aluminum. And oxygen at the carbon anode. Okay. At, the, at the anode, we get oxygen. You know, we have to know that al, uh, this bauxite, right, is made of aluminum and oxide. So bauxite is aluminum oxide. So the aluminum 3 plus will change to Al, as we discussed here. The oxide, O2 minus, O2 minus, uh, something like this, huh? at the anode, we have the oxide that go to the anode because anode is positively charged. So the negative ions will go to the positive anode. Then oxidation. Oxidation happens. And then oxidation means loose electrons. So the oxides, loose electrons become oxygen. And we balance the equation and we get this. Okay, so we get aluminum, uh, we got oxygen. I get oxygen. Huh? So it seems like, wow, this is uh, a very environment friendly uh, process huh? because it produces oxygen, but it's not actually. You look at the next point the oxygen produced because of high temperature. The oxygen will further react with the graphite anode. Graphite anode means the carbon anode. 
to form carbon dioxide. And so N0 had to be periodically replaced. So at the end, the oxygen will combine with the carbon and form carbon dioxide instead. And the carbon N0, the carbon will just getting less and less. So that's why you need to replace the carbon N0 at a particular uh, after you after using it for a particular durations. Okay, so that's extractions of aluminium. Now uh, let's see electrolysis of brine. Okay, so uh, this is where we want to extract. Huh? We want to extract something from the brine. So what is brine? Huh? Brine is concentrated sodium chloride solutions. For example, seawater. So you try to imagine seawater has high content of salt. Okay, so. so yeah. Ah, yeah. Uh, so, actually, uh, this brine is that we have to take something from out of the brine. Yes, we have to take something. Yeah, extract something. Okay. So now let's look at the second point. In the brine, we have four ions, and A plus, H plus, Dl minus, and OH minus. Four types of ion. Huh? So the NaCl is from the salt itself. The H plus and OH minus is from the water. Okay. Now let's see the electrolysis of brine. So we have the diaphragm in between of the electrolytic cell. On the left, you can see this is positively charged. So that means this is the anode. So this is the anode. Uh, what happened at anode? You can see here, anode. At anode, the, you know, anode is positively charged, huh? as you can see here. So the negative. So the 200 and the 5 must put underwear. So, yes. Actually, anode is on the. I mean, uh, the positive terminal is the cathode, right? Uh, negative is cathode. Uh, but for the. The, uh, the earlier one that we learned. Uh -huh. That is cathode is the positive, right? Um, cathode is positive in whole cell. Oh, okay. Cathode is negative in electron by thick cell. Cathode is positive in uh, Otic cell is not in the IGCSE chemistry system. So, okay, so that means in order to handle this subject, you can just remember that cathode is negative. Uh, so because in IGCSE chemistry, uh, we learn electrolytic cell. Huh? Okay, so cathode is negative and not is positive. So that means N0 is the other way around. Uh, N0 is positive in electrolytic cell. N0 is negative in voltaic cell. But voltaic cell again, not in syllabus. Okay, so we just need to learn this and this. So that's why N0 is positively charged. Then it attracts negative ion, which is known as N ion. The N ion that are attracted are chloride and hydroxide. So chloride, hydroxide are attracted to the N0. Now you see the information here. The anode is made of titanium. Titanium, huh? 
Okay. Uh, chloride and hydroxide are going to the anode, and we need to choose one of these anion to donate electrons to form the final product. So which one should we choose? That is the rule. If you still remember that, if there are halogens in concentrated solutions, then we have to choose the halogens to form the product. The halogen that I mean is chlorine, bromine, and iodine. Eh? If you have chlorine, bromine, and iodine in high concentration, then you choose them to form products. Okay, so the halogen does not include fluorine. Eh? Fluorine don't choose. Don't choose fluoride to form fluorine. Okay, fluoride, no. Okay, only for chlorine, bromine, and iodine. If they are there and they are in high concentration, choose them to form product. Okay, so this one will form product. This one is chosen to form product. So how they form product? Chloride donate electrons to become chlorine gas plus electrons. So we put two chloride here, the charge become two minus. So here we balance with two electrons. So that is how the equation looks like. Huh? So chloride form chlorine. So that's why the second point they put here, chlorine gas evolve. So the gas come out from here. Now you get a chlorine gas. Okay. Then unreacted ions, and A plus, H plus, and OH minus, move through porous membrane. This is the porous membrane, which is known as diaphragm, due to difference in liquid pressure. Okay, so they will come to the other side. They will go to the other side. Huh? Uh, so basically, uh, kind of reasonable uh, why they go here because you see here is the cathode uh, which is negative charge. So Na plus and H plus is coming here naturally. Okay. So even OH minus are free to move to this side. If they don't like, they can come back again. You know. So since this is not going to form the product, uh, so let's move on. Net flow to the right. So that means we have a flowing of ions to the right. Okay, at the cathode. So you need to know cathode is, as we wrote here, cathode is negatively charged. It's a negative electron. So it attracts cation, which is positive ion. So the positive ion is Na plus and H plus. These two Ni. These two cations are attracted to the cathode. Cathode is made of steel. Okay, so cathode, this is the cathode, the black one is the cathode. Hydrogen cations reduce to H2 molecules. So out of these two, right, you may wondering which form products. So H plus form the products. And A plus is too reactive, although it is in uh, large amount, you know, because it's concentrated NaCl. Uh, a lot of Na plus is there, but Na plus is too reactive, it can't form product. Okay, now hydrogen cations reduce to H2 molecules, so that's how you should expect the hydrogen gas to come up from here. And now you see this one has been used to form chlorine. This one has been used to form hydrogen gas. So what remain is OH minus and Na plus. So these two remains in the electrolyte. So that's why the next point you can see left Na plus and OH minus, which is aqueous sodium hydroxide. So they form aqueous sodium hydroxide. So at the end, uh, the electrolytes is alkaline. You know, sodium hydroxide is alkaline, uh, so it becomes alkaline. Uh, so from NaCl, which is neutral, it becomes alkaline after a while. Uh, so okay. if you see what we have here, we have done everything. 
So this is the starting of the question ready. Okay. Now uh, I'm going to choose uh, suitable questions for practice. Okay, so the first question is suitable. Okay, so I'm going to discuss with you straight away the first questions. So let's take a look. This is the first questions. Okay, so this is about electroplating that we learned just now. So electroplating steel object with silver involve a three three step process. So you can see they put the steel object here at the cathode. You know, cathode, uh, like what I mentioned before, you imagine that it's a cat. Okay, cathode sounds like cat. So cats become fat. Okay? So it will become thicker, in other words. So the metal layers will go to the cathode. So what you want to do, the metal layer that you want to add on the cathode, you put at the anode. So you want to put copper on the copper layers on the, the stars, and then you put copper at the anode. Okay, so step one, a coating of copper is applied to the object. A coating of nickel is applied to the object. That means you put copper first. Then you put nickel. Then you put silver. So you need to keep changing your anode, in other words. From copper, change to nickel. When you use nickel, then the electrolyte must have nickel ions present. And then step three, you change to silver. So the anode change to silver. Then the electrolyte change to aqueous silver something. And so the the metal ion must be there in the electrolyte. Okay. Now let's continue. So a a diagram of the apparatus used for step one is shown. Okay. So as you can see, this is the the diagram where copper is going to add on the steel object. The chemical process taking place on the surface of the object is Cu2 plus. Cu2 plus which come to the cathode, get electrons from the cathode, and then become Cu atom. Uh, this is a solid and it will stick on the steel object. So explain whether this process is oxidation or reduction. So of course, this is a reduction. As you need to remember, reduction means receive electrons. Okay, so we write now, reduction. Okay, and of course you have to explain it. Huh? You can't just, just write reduction and finish. Okay, so reduction. So, uh, because it is uh, Cu2 plus gains electrons. Okay. So, which means uh, this thing happens in the cathode? Yeah, it happens at the cathode. Okay. Okay, Let's continue. Part two. Okay, so part two. Uh, so, uh, for part one, um, just a reduction and then copper two plus gains electron to become to become copper. That that answers already enough. Okay. The key word is gain electrons. So, okay, sir. So now let's look at part two. Explain why the concentration of copper ions in the electrolyte remains constant throughout step one. The concentration. You know, try to imagine that from part one, the Cu2 plus is the Cu2 plus from the electrolyte. Seems like taking electron and stick here. So logically, you may feel like, oh, the concentration of Cu2 plus should decrease. 
I should decrease, huh? But the thing is, they said remain the same. Okay. Although CU2 plus keep coming here and form CU, so the CU2 plus keep uh, losing from the electrolytes. But the concentration remain the same, basically because the anode will just keep forming CU2 plus at the same time, at the same rate. Okay. So uh, remember, uh, there, are, there are two points. Uh. CU2 plus come to the cathode and become CU. But that is replaced with the CU2 plus, which come out from the N naught. Okay, so let's write it in words. Huh? So two marks questions. So we have to put in two points. So the first point, uh, we talk about the N naught. We say formations of CU2 plus at the and not happens at the same rate, same rate as removal of Cu2 plus at the cathode. Okay, so that is the, the two points. Huh? The first point is the formations of Cu2 plus at the anode. The second point is removal of Cu2 plus at the cathode. And so these are the two points. Okay, now let's see part B. Give two changes which would be needed in order to coat nickel onto the object in step two. Okay, so now you want to coat nickel. Like what I mentioned, the anode you need to change to nickel, the electrolyte you need to change to an aqueous solution with nickel. Okay, so we need to do these two things. Okay, so now we write it in words. The first one, replace copper with nickel. The copper in at the end, not there, you replace the copper with nickel. That's the first point. The second point is replace electrolyte. Okay, now you have to give yourself one example huh? with nickel to sulfate. Nickel to sulfate. Okay. So we look at C. Copper, nickel, and silver are transition elements. Typical physical properties of transition elements are a high density and a high melting point. Give three different properties of transition metals which are not typical of other metals. Okay, so of course this is not under the chapters of electrochemistry. Yeah? This is under the transition elements. So uh, I just give you the answer straight away. So besides high density and high melting points, other Okay. It has oxidation number. Uh, yeah. It has oxidation number. This is one. It's colorful. colorful. Okay. So that's correct. It's form colored compounds and we need one more 
you know, they used to act as catalysts. Uh, okay, so we have three points. So we have done this question. Okay, now uh, let us see another suitable question. Huh? So let me take a quick look first before we continue. So are you there? Uh, I am. Okay. I'm trying to check which question is suitable then. Okay, sir. Okay, so I have found a suitable question, which is question on page six. Page six, huh? got this file, page six. Okay, now let us go through these questions together. Okay, aluminium is obtained from purified alumina, aluminium oxide, by electrolysis. Okay, so this is what we discussed in the notes also uh, just now, uh, where that time I said bauxite uh, is the ore, and then inside the bauxite you have al aluminium oxide. Okay, now A. Alumina is obtained from the main ore of aluminium. State the name of this ore. So the name is. Oxide. Oxide. Oh, I said oxide. Oh, oh oxide. I so actually, bauxite is aluminium oxide. Uh, true. Okay. Inside the bauxite, we have aluminium oxide. We have so, iron, so you know. Oh, and there's also other minerals. So when we want to um. When we want to uh take the aluminium only, uh. What about the oxide? We are actually discarding the oxide also. You know, just now in the note, the yeah. oxide becomes oxygen. Yeah. Then we combine with carbon. Yeah. To yeah. Carbon. Sorry? Sorry? Okay. 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 I'm a bit, um, I, I should watch the recordings again because I got uh, complicated by the first one. Oh, the whole three things I got complicated already. Oh, okay. Yeah. No problem. Let's watch it. Okay. Now, let's continue. Look at part B. Describe the extractions of aluminium from alumina. Include the electrolyte, the electrodes, and the reactions and the electrodes. So it's a six marks question, you see, quite a lot. Uh, so you need to know all the details, okay, especially the electrolyte, electrodes, and the reactions. Okay, so how to get six marks? So, first, uh, we have to talk about the cryolite, the cryolite. Huh? Okay, so you know the melting point of alumina is too high. Yes. Cryolite. Yeah. Lower the melting point. Okay, so first point. Electrolyte. 
Illumina. Dissolve. In. Molten. Cryolite. Okay, then second point. Cryolite is used to reduce the melting point. of alumina okay this is what i mentioned just now huh? uh, if you don't use cryolite you have to expect the melting point of alumina to reach four digits with cryolite it will be three digits okay so now next point okay electrolyte we said already electrodes are carbon yeah. Okay. Electrons. Carbon. Okay, you get one mark straight away for this. And reactions at the electrons. Reaction at the electrons. Huh? So of course electrons here have cathode and 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 not so we should expect to write two reactions okay so this is a fourth point the fourth point is the, the cathode let's say yeah the cathode um, aluminium is produced aluminium is Produce. Then we write the equation Al3 plus plus three electrons become aluminium. Okay, now the fourth point one, two, three, four, the fifth point and not oxygen. Uh, All right. Okay, so oxygen is formed. Oxygen is formed. So we write the equation O2 minus become oxygen plus electron. So since O2 is here, so you should have two, two oxygen on the left and you make the charge to become four minus. So you put four electron here to make the charge balance but oxygens will not be the final products so we have to put in the last point saying that the oxygens will react with the carbon to form carbon dioxide okay so we have uh, oxygens react with carbon from anode and then carbon plus oxygen become carbon dioxide so that is the uh, the extractions of aluminium okay now let's see part c at part c we have this aluminium is resistant to corrosion. That means it doesn't corrode. Okay, not like not like iron, it corrodes. We call it rust. Okay, but aluminium, no. It is protected by an oxide layer on its surface. So it doesn't rust because of the aluminium oxide which form naturally yeah, to protect the aluminium from corrosion. The thickness of this oxide layer can be increased by anodizing. Anodizing. Okay, so uh, anodizing is what? Okay, so let's take a quick look. Huh? So I let you see. 
analyzing by using Google. Okay, so but we don't want to look at the, the diagram now. We just want to look at the definition only. Okay, analyzing. So anodizing, as you can see here, anodizing is an electrochemical process that converts a metal surface into a decorative anodic oxide finish. The anodic oxide structures is made up of a layer of aluminum oxide on the surface of the aluminum which slightly increase the thickness of the metal. So what happened is uh, the anodizing uh, is where aluminum oxide stick to the surface of the anode. Okay, so that is uh, anodizing. Uh. Okay, now is let's it, uh, So is it like purification? Purification is a little bit different because uh, what happened is the pure metal will stick to the cathode. Stick to the cathode. Eh? Oh, the thing is where a lock really on the first at cannot and the middle of type layer is added to the anode. Mm -hmm. Sir, I still don't understand anodizing. Uh, we, we don't need to understand properly. We just need to take the main idea. Okay, Remember that, uh, the main idea, we don't need to understand properly because it's not in the syllabus, uh, but there still are something which is not in the syllabus sometimes. It's just that they give, they give some explanation at the same time. Okay, so remember the main point of anodizing is the anode will aluminum oxide layer added to it. Okay, so that is anodizing. Okay, sir. So the main point, yeah. So the main point is actually here. The aluminum oxide will add to the anode through a reaction known as anodizing. So that is anodizing. Uh, in details, no need to know. Okay, so let's continue with C part one. State a use of aluminum due to its resistance to corrosions. Okay, so for example, right, uh, drink cans, which is made of aluminum, uh, it doesn't corrode because there is an aluminum oxide yeah, which protect the aluminum can from corrosions, uh, drink cans. Okay, so uh, Another famous use is the cooking foil, which is known as aluminium foil. You put in the oven, for example, to cook fish. That's a cooking foil. So that is uh, another famous one. Uh, beside that, we also have certain food containers made of aluminium. Uh, food containers. Okay, so I just give you three. To stand by. In fact, we just need to write one. Okay, now part two. Uh, now they talk about anodizing. Yeah. So, um, since they asked for the for part in part one, since they asked for the use of aluminium, so basically I just have to like state uh, like drink cans, cooking foil, and uh, food container. That's all. Right. Oh, isn't it like uh, that we have to uh, answer like um, like a good conductor or something? Is it uh, like that? Not necessary because it is here. It's written here. Due to its resistance to corrosion. Okay, so it's fine writing like this. Okay. 
So yeah, don't say anything like aluminum is used in electricity yeah. cable. No, huh? because that is for the conductivity. It's not because of its corrosion resistance to corrosions. Okay, so let's move on. Part two. Anodizing is an electrolytic process. Dilute sulfuric acid is electrolyzed with an aluminum object as the anode. The thickness of the oxide layer is increased. Complete the equation for the reaction at the aluminum anode. Uh, so you can see uh, the anode. We use aluminium. Okay, we use aluminium. Huh? And this question try to let you understand a little bit on anodizing. Okay, so you know anode is positive electron. So it attracts an ion, the negative ion, so which is hydroxide. They tell you already. You just need to balance the equation. Okay, so they tell you the anion that go to the anode is hydroxide. Then we need to balance the equations. So how to balance? You see oxygen. Huh? We have two oxygen and another two oxygen. So there are four oxygens. There are four hydrogens. Two times two is four. Huh? So we have to put four hydroxide. So that we have four oxygen and four hydrogen on the left to balance with the right. Now the charge becomes four minus. So we put four electron here to balance with the charge. Okay. So what happened is the hydroxides change to oxygen. The oxygens will react with the aluminium at the anode to form aluminium oxide. So aluminium react with oxygen to form aluminium oxide. So they are they are trying to let you know what happens in anodizing. Huh? Uh, so if you understand these two equations, then at the end you will understand oh that is how it works. That is how that is how aluminium oxide stick to anode. So let's see, huh? Okay, we need to balance the equation. So let's look at the oxygen first. We have three oxygen, but here two. So to balance them, let's take the common multiple, six. So let's put two here to make the oxygen to be six. Let's put three here. Three times two is also six. Okay, now because of the two, we have two times two, four aluminum. So we put four here. Okay, then we manage to balance the equation. Okay, so they, they don't expect you to understand anodizing in details, but they are giving us uh, enough details to understand uh, anodizing. Of course, what they test is they just want to test you on how to balance the equation, huh? but indirectly, we already know what is anodizing. Okay, so the conclusion for anodizing is you put aluminium as the anode and then hydroxide ion will go to the anode and oxidize to form oxygen. Oxygen will react with the aluminium at the anode and they form aluminium oxide. Aluminium oxide will stick to the anode. So making the anode having a thicker layer of aluminium oxide. So that is anodizing. Okay, so we have done this part. Okay, so uh, we have done this. Now let's look at the next file. Multiple choice. Huh? Okay, multiple choice. Let's go through a few questions related to what we learned just now. Okay, so 
let me see which question is suitable first, then I will let you know again. Okay, so. Oh yeah, question one is suitable. The diagram shows an electrical cable, plastic coating, metal core. Which statement about the substances used is correct? Okay, let's see one by one. Huh? The coating is plastic because it conducts electricity well. So of course, wrong. Plastic is insulator. So this part make it wrong. The core is copper because it conducts electricity well. Uh, okay, so uh, if you still remember, uh, we, we say that aluminium is outside the house. Okay, it's used as cable outside the house. Copper is used as wire inside the house. Uh, so okay, the core here, copper, uh, okay, acceptable. Okay, so acceptable. Huh? So this is correct. But let's see C first. The core is copper because it is cheap and strong. Uh, cheap is not cheap actually. Copper is expensive. Uh, okay, strong. Okay lah. Uh, so, but the thing is, the core is copper. It's not because it is strong. The core is copper because it is a good conductor. Because it's a good conductor. Huh? Okay, so that's why this statement is inaccurate. Okay, although we have the strong, which seems to be okay also, which seems to be true, but it is not the reason. Okay, so don't choose C. D, the core is iron because it is cheap and strong. Okay, so uh, not true also. Huh? Electric, electrical cable, we use copper. So we don't use iron. Okay, so no. Okay, so B. So the answer is B. Now uh, let's find other question which is relevant to what we learned just now. Okay, so yeah, this is the one that I show you in the Google just now, the ceramics. How they use the ceramics in the pylon. Huh? So number six, the diagram shows the sections of an overhead power cable. Okay, overhead power cable, uh, the cable outside of the house. Okay, so they call it overhead power cable. And which statement explain why a particular substance is used? Okay, so Aluminium, you see A, eh? aluminium has a low density and is a good conductor of electricity. So this is okay, let's yes. yeah. okay, let's see why B is wrong. Ceramic is a good conductor. Okay, wrong. It's insulator. Steel can rust in, a, in damp air. Uh, no, steel is, uh, you know, steel is not rusting. Eh? So iron, yes, steel, no. Steel is more dense than aluminium. Okay, so uh, although this is correct statement, but it is not the reason why it is used. Okay, so not relevant. Okay, so the answer is A. Okay. Now, let's try others. Uh, so, yeah. can I know why uh, D is not uh, so right, actually? Uh, because the question is asking why still why a particular substance is used. So, which means why steel is used. Uh, steel is used over there just to strengthen the power cable. Just to strengthen the power cable. Huh? So, 
uh, if the statement said still is used because it is strong, then okay, acceptable. It is strong. Okay, so to make the cable strong, okay, don't break easily. In other words, uh, we don't want to have you know imagine that a monkey stand on the power cable and the cable breaks. You know we don't want that to happen. You know, so you add still there is to make the cable strong. But uh, this seems like not explaining it. Okay, they want you to explain why the particular substance is used. Steel is used because it's stronger than uh, aluminum, then it will be correct. Not that then to make it sink, you know, so not relevant explanation. Okay, so understand. So let's move on. Okay, we'll do a few more. Okay, so this is relevant to what we learned just now. The diagram shows a few attempts to copper plate a pen. Okay, so fail attempt. That means something wrong with the diagram. Copper cathode. Okay, so pen at the end not. You know our concept is cat thought think of cat it becomes thicker it becomes thicker uh, and not become thinner think of end and become ends it looks very thin right so and think of thinner okay and not becomes thinner so if you put pens here the pens become thinner what for we don't want the pens to become thinner we want the pen to have a copper layer plate on it so we should put the pen at the cathode and we should put the copper at the anode so that it becomes thinner and the copper 2 plus come to the cathode. Uh, so they put in the other way around. So which action will plate the pen with copper? Okay, so now let's see the choices here. Cooling the copper sulfate solution in an ice bath. Okay, it doesn't help. Okay, we just want to make the cathode and anodes in the opposite way. Eh? So because of that, uh, the answer should be D. Making the pen the cathode. Okay, so that it become thicker. Become thicker. That means be uh, having copper layer, electrode plated on it. And the copper, the anode. Uh, copper put at the anode so that it becomes thinner, so that the copper atom dissolve in the electrolyte. Uh, so answer should be D. Okay. Increase the voltage from three volt to six volt. Uh, uh, it doesn't help also. Uh. Uh, using high voltage normally will make the the electro plating happens quickly, but the main issue is not soft yet. Okay, it's not soft yet. Huh? They put at the wrong electrode. Okay, now let's see one more. Okay, eleven. Huh? the diagram shows the electro plating of a steel object. Okay, so you can see they put steel object at the negative. Negative means cathode, which is correct. A student makes the following statement. The object turns a reddish brown color. Reddish brown color. That is the color of copper. So you need to remember copper has this color. Okay. So because of that, number one is correct. Number two, the copper sulfate solution changes to a paler blue color. This is not correct. If you still remember the, the structure question that we 
we did just now, where we say that although the Cu2 plus come to the steel, which you may thought it will decrease in concentration, uh, but it is not because the copper and not will replace the Cu2 plus by dissolving the copper metal in the electrolytes. So the concentration will remain the same. It doesn't become paler. Will be constant. Eh? Okay. Concentration is constant. So the color intensity is hence constant also. If number two is wrong, then we know the answer already from the choices here. Uh, so if number two is wrong, wrong. C. So number three is correct. So let's take a look. The copper electrode becomes smaller, which is correct. This is anode. Anode becomes thinner, so it becomes smaller. Uh, C, correct. 